Hello and welcome to the 12 for what will be our level 16 episode of Purple Dust Potions. Sitting here in a rather curious vantage point in front of the bridge leading to the tower itself. Contemplating our life's choices thus far. Speaking of which, we, we just took 16 and we had a feat to take at 16. We got the, um, you might recall earlier on, we took the Alchemical Studies Pyrite, which allowed us an extra caster level for orange and, sorry, for, for red and yellow spells, which do make orange. Um, our offensive spells, basically. So now we've got Advanced Alchemical Studies Pyrite, so another caster level for the same orange and yellow spells. I'm assuming these are um, still blocked by the maximum caster level, so I'm not sure how much use they'll be going further forward. If any of you sages out there would care to comment on that, I'd be glad to hear from you. Failing that, uh, at least at this moment, it can't hurt us because we do have some things like this caustic overload that scale up to 20 at least. And I think Multivile as well goes to 20, does it? Um, yeah, Max cast to 20. So I don't think it can hurt us, at least for now. Right, um, no gear changes at all for this level. And I probably don't anticipate any now until reaching Epic. Uh, one of you did mention that you'd done um, the Inquisitive Alchemist, which seems to me with the Vile Chemist to be a really good fit, if not the best fit for Inquisitive. Um, the reason I didn't do that, uh, well, I'm guessing most, if not all of you who play the game have seen that play style and tried it yourselves multiple times. And for myself personally, it's uh, it's a bit of a poison chalice, the Inquisitive uh, tree, to me. It's excellent in so much as um, it allows you huge flexibility in acquiring uh, a whole variety of past lives. Maybe there are one or two classes that you just don't feel like playing or don't have the gear for and just throw it into an inquisitive build and because the power comes from the inquisitive tree itself it doesn't really matter that you are um, playing a sort of a half-baked class for want of a better term the downside to that is in many cases for me at least you're not experiencing the the class as it was meant to to be which i suppose if you are let's say you're averse to all things melee or, and or you don't have any gear for that play style and you don't want to take the trouble to to acquire any then it's a way it's a way out you could totally do fighter lives and or e even things that really don't match up at all with it you could do I'm sure you could do a paladin inquisitive and that would be fine so it's one way uh, to towards getting um, those lives while um, doing a minimum of uh, swapping about with gear. Maybe not any swapping about if you just have the crossbows and the the basic deadly seeker, all the rest of the stuff. You can you can do a whole array of lives, but by the same token, you're kind of missing the uh, the 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 way the class should really be played and an understanding of 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 that which I'm ashamed to say it's only as I've started with the purple series that I've been discovering some of that for myself. It's been fun and eye-opening at the same time, like the Tempest Ranger we did last time around. That was a first-time uh, discovery, <laughs> albeit it was made a bit more spicy by the appearance of the Illithids, but uh, it was a nice journey of discovery nonetheless. So that's uh, that's basically my long-winded version of why I didn't uh, choose to do uh, Inquisitive, and I won't be doing that uh, in the Purple series. 
Um, I think that's about it. There's no no real changes on the gear or anything like that. We've been working our way um, back up the bombard tree, so we've got everything up at the top that we want now. To that end, I have added in the um, elemental combination. You might recall in a past episode I mentioned that that, with it doing three separate random effects each time, might be a good way to trigger this um, vulnerability thing on a, on an end boss or something. I can see that being more useful in Epic, where end bosses might last longer. But if I can remember to to hit it uh, for a boss fight in conjunction with the bottled boost spell that we've got now for more uh, 30 more spell power and the reaper power so that could give us a 75 bonus to uh, spell power just for uh, 20 seconds or so if I remember to click the buggers which is a big if for me especially as I've just acquired that spell one uh, we also have access to the heal spell now from level 6. I haven't got it selected because um, we've been using a mixture of the spell-like abilities from um, uh, Apothecary Tree to keep us topped up so far. Um, the one I should really... I have been using this little one, which works okay. It's, oh, crud. You've got to have yourself targeted when you want to be hit with these bottles. It works okay. I think that was a crit. Let's just give you a better idea. Oh, no, no. So that's standard outside of Reaper. Outside of the Reaper nerf. That's not bad. Um, but this one, the Cure Serious, I've been using its um, sister version, as you know, the Inflict Serious Mass. The, the problem with using this as the cure would be it puts the other one on cooldown, but it's only a relatively short cooldown, and just for a top-up, I'm sure it would be fine. I'll, I'll stick to the, um, the little one just for the small top-ups in between, but maybe if we get into trouble in a fight, we could perhaps, as it's only Reaper 1, we could perhaps make use of that one to... Uh, to regain some health too. Right, waffle is over. We're going to try this one here. I'm not sure. Have I featured this one before? I'm not sure. So this is subversion. Renewing our uh, battles with the devils and such. I'll be interested to see if we can... Uh, we've got the Melt Lock spell now. <laughs> Maybe with a view to this quest in particular, because there is, as many of you will know, I'm sure, a quicker way through this one, if you have a means to unlock the, the door. After a long march through the hidden cave complex, I am just Earth wondering... If we, there would be any mileage in attempting to turn these things to frogs, so we're going to try. The colour spray obviously works well. Oh, happy days! <laughs> okay. If it worked once, it's got to work again, right? We missed it with the crowd control, but all froggies do. Oh, God! I think we're about to trivialize this opening sequence if this carries on. Now then, get to work. The pit fiend continues. I expect you to retrieve the titan. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Or else. The slard almost smiles. But it seems that we've gone so quickly there, we we've uh so much for your run into a secrecy. A pause point in the quest here. Take care of it. Remember, I expect the so turn to frog for the win there. 
Turn to frog, by the way, is on a 47 DC. I guess that could have been a uh, different option. Maybe at 20 that will be an option to take the um, greater spell focus transmutation to boost that up a little bit as it's proving to be so useful already. Let's get the displacement up. Now this could be a serious pinch point. This could be a point for the flash freeze actually. Wait for them, wait for them, wait for them. Boom. Happy days. I'll take that. I was asking someone yesterday if they knew of a a decent box breaking, a uh, low cost box breaking uh, spell on the Inquisitive because up to now I haven't found anything. So let's test out our lock breaking skills. Happy days. <coughs> Did I say inquisitive? I meant alchemist. <laughs> My bad. One of you's got me thinking about inquisitive. Actually, my um, on that subject, my uh, rightly or wrongly, my uh, my little gnome bow user, Red Ruin, does level as an inquisitive. He's an end game um, Horizon Walker type build, but he uses the inquisitive tree to uh, level up. is not good. Okay. Could have done that better. We're going to get a load of stuff here. Now, if you have a D-door, you can avoid this section, as I'm sure plenty of you will know. Press the wrong key there. As I'm equally sure most of you will have seen. Should have just frogged that one. Okay. So I think these can come straight round the corner almost immediately. Yep. Target the right one. Multivile. Missed it. Made a mess of the flash freeze as well. This ain't going well, is it? Okay, let's try and do better this time. Try and get them all. That's more like it. There's always one, isn't there? Doesn't play the game. Okay, we're not going to go down any side passages because we're going to try and unlock that door at the end. That was a bit of a mess. Let's get them back to the Orthons. Go for the flash freeze on everything. Come on. Yeah, that's good. Okay, test our lock breaking skills. Or melting. Did that work? I didn't see if it worked or not. No, oh dear. Ah, happy days. I didn't see what we... Oh, we rolled a 15 there, okay. We got through, that's the main thing. Right, let's have a little top up. Get our uh, gold skin back on. Now, what should we do with that? Should we just go with a, a bombard from distance? There's a plague reaper in there. Let's let's have a look at our boosts here. 
don't hit the roof. Oh my God, <laughs> that's one of the perils of not having accelerate, I guess. Okay, let's go a bit further and try that again. That's more like it, people. If at first you don't succeed, turn people to frogs. Okay, now we could try to bombard that second lot as well. Shall we do the... I tell you what, we'll get rid of those first because I don't want them just coming wandering in. Well, we're not ready for them. Let's uh, send a bit of an invitation out. I tried the uh, greater colour spray there and nothing seemed to happen. That wasn't good. Okay. Right, let's have a go at the optional. Three levers to, or valves to pull here. With all the valves open, the machinery in the other alcove springs to life. The wall okay, so in the opposite alcove fire resistance on. as the lever locks into place, revealing a door beyond. A blast of heat washes out. Oh, no, 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 no. My color spray doesn't seem to be working. And what's going wrong there? Oh, that's obviously a boss. That's why it's not working on him. Well, that was a disaster. We frogged the last one. Oh, that was awful. Why didn't the colour spray work? It does work. Must be just me pressing the wrong key. Now we took a hell of a battering there. And that was the, uh, the bigger of the two uh, heel SLAs. So outside of um, combat, that thing is awesome for a, a nice top up but no that was embarrassingly bad must do better the color sprays in there specifically to hold the reaper so I'm gonna redeem myself by <laughs> just having a quick look at the manor and realizing we're almost out so we'd better shrine so at least give us a chance in the end fight. Now the biggest nightmare in this end fight, for those of you not familiar with this quest, is being knocked down by the slard and just not getting up again. Breakables. Yeah, these things, if you're wondering, only come to life on uh, epic, uh, sorry, legendary version. We could bombard that guy from a very long way away and at least try to ensure quest completion. Try not to be hit too much by them. Come on. Today. Nope. The rest of them are just... Uh, we have actually completed the quest, haven't we? We could just... Um, we could just wander out here, couldn't we? Oh, where would be the... Where would be the... Where's the sense of pride? Come on. Carnage Reaper in the background that needs to be challenged. And at least if we die now, we have the satisfaction of knowing the quest has been completed. Not today, people. Not today. Okay. <coughs> So there can be a, a nice repeating crossbow in here. Uh, that's not it. But um, I 
Yeah, we do have an artificer life coming up in the fullness of time. Well, a couple of misplays and wrong keys and all the rest of it, but uh, I think we showed enough there to, uh, to see that the build's in a reasonably good place. We're moving forward. The frog <laughs> in situationally is insanely good against those big single targets that are not uh, immune to it. Just really, really good. Or if you get a nasty, uh, a nasty crown, especially a caster. Of course, so anything that's, um, I think, if if things are immune to death ward, uh, sorry, if things have death ward rather, immune to death spells, they'll be immune to this as well, I would think. But uh, regardless, it's uh, situationally extremely useful as you've seen. I look forward to. Uh, to being able to quicken some of this stuff, especially the frog, and, and just get it to, to the next level of, uh, of deadliness. Probably have to wait, looking at where the mana was in that one, until um, going into Epic, and as one of you's already mentioned, taking the Evergreen from the Primal, because this is uh, certainly, once you start adding Multivile into the equation, a thirsty build but um, hopefully you've seen it's uh, pretty effective I mean I know the um, flash freeze is expensive in terms of mana and also expensive in terms of the uh, danger to yourself in that you've got to be literally surrounded for it to be at its most effective but being surrounded uh, is when the, both the flash freeze and the multivile are at the most effective because it literally obliterates everything that's around you, the multivile. And if you've got everything helpless from the freeze, it's just uh, happy days. So I can see I can see a bright future for us. At least I'm hoping so. Right, I think that about wraps it up for this one. Thank you very much as always for looking and I will speak to you in the next one. Take care.